describe Iran's level of cooperation in the investigation right now? And how much more do you have to see from them? What more do you have to see from them to satisfy the questions that Canadians have about why this happened and how it happened? Well, um, I assume you're asking me the question, so let me provide an answer, and I mean Dominic may, may want to add with his own experience. Um, obviously, the first uh, communication we had with uh, the state of Iran was yesterday night, as you know, around midnight. I did call uh, my counterpart in Iran. Um, I made the case that Canada had the legitimate need to access. We want to send our quick reaction team, obviously, on the ground to be able to provide consular services. I did stress that Canadians and Canada has a legitimate need and concern with respect to the investigation, that we wanted to bring Canada's expertise and Canada's commitment to be an active participant in the investigation. And I would say that um, the response by the Iranian government or the Iranian foreign minister was open, was encouraging. Now, we are pursuing at the officials level because Canadians should understand that the first step is obviously, since Canada does not have a presence in Iran, the first step is for us to obtain visas so our quick reaction team can be on the ground to provide consular services to be able, obviously, to work with families and loved ones to provide the answers that they deserve. So step one is obviously getting the visa. And I can tell you today, following the discussion I had yesterday, uh, that we had officials engaged. And at the officials level, um, what I can report to Canadians is that it seems that the discussion of yesterday was followed up, that the officials have received um, indication that they can go forward with the issuance of the visas. Uh, we are following that, I would say, minute by minute or hour by hour, and we will be providing all the information to Canadians. As soon as I have news, we will make sure that Canadians know exactly where we are. This is step one, getting access in the country for our quick reaction team, and obviously being able to participate in the investigation. Uh, obviously, the first conversation I had uh, was last night with my Iranian counterpart. As you know, Canada has had no communications with Iran for several years. What I uh, emphasized to the uh, Iranian Minister of Foreign Affairs was the need for our quick reaction team to be able to enter Iranian territory, to be able to provide consular services to the families who are uh, affected by this. I asked him to facilitate the issuance of visas for these people to be able to enter uh, Iranian territory. I also I told him of Canada's legitimate demand to be an active part of any investigation that will take place. And I can tell you that today, officials have been in touch following my conversation with the Iranian Minister of Foreign Affairs. We are tracking this situation hourly to be sure that what uh, what our Iranian counterparts demonstrated in terms of openness. Uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see if the visas will be issued. Obviously, this is an evolving situation. It changes every hour. But I can tell you that the contacts that we have had would seem to indicate today that the Iranian regime is, in fact, issuing visas to our officials to enable them to enter Iranian territory. And then, ultimately, there's the issue of the investigation. I have said that we will convey the information to Canadians and to the families that are in, affected by this. As soon as I have any information, we will be transparent with Canadians. I, I agree with uh, uh, your assessment. Um, I would just say this, there is a standard, international, global standard for how investigations in these circumstances should take place. And of course, we expect a full, transparent and uh, swift uh, uh, examination and investigation according to international standards. And obviously for, for us uh, as foreign ministers, uh, but for all of those families, whether it's Canadian, British, uh, but all the families of the victims, I think they would expect us 
uh, to get that transparency and to see Iran in its early days. And it's good to see um, uh, this uh, starting to feel like a collaborative effort. But we need absolutely full and transparent investigation. And I think it's not just here uh, in Canada or here in, uh, back home in the UK that, that the families of the victims would expect it. I'm, I'm sure in Iran the families will expect no less. Um, and I think if we don't see it, um, and obviously I want to give it time and I want this to be a collaborative endeavour, then I think it will only fuel more questions, not least given our assessment of uh, the causation of the accident. Monsieur le ministre, euh, le Premier ministre un peu plus tôt... Earlier, the Prime Minister had talked about the wish to have an investigation. The world wants answers to these questions. You've also mentioned this fact. I'd like to ask you what question this investigation is supposed to answer. What is it that you are trying to clarify in terms of information relating to this tragedy? Well, clearly what Canadians are asking, what the world is asking, what Canada is asking, is, as my colleague Dominic Rabb has said, what the Iranian families are asking as well, are the causes of the accident. There are serious allegations that were made today uh, based on information obtained from intelligence services. It, it would seem that a likely cause, the likely cause of the crash is a surface-to-air missile, which is alleged to have been shot from Iranian soil. In any circumstance of any air incident, we want to clarify what happened. People have legitimate questions. People want fulsome answers. And the best way to obtain this is to behave transparently. As we said to our Iranian call counterparts, we want them to allow Canadian investigators and investigators from the Ukraine and from other countries, because I believe that uh, following the allegations, a multilateral uh, effort is uh, clearly required. I think the world wants to understand, wants to know what happened. The Iranian families also want to know what happened. I'm sure of that. So what we said is that as Canada and other countries as well, we are offering our assistance, our technical expertise to be able to answer those questions and to shed light on what has happened, because as has been said, the indications and information obtained, intelligence that we have obtained to date, would indicate that this would have been the cause, that the, a surface-to-air missile would have caused this, and it is also possible that this was done unintentionally. So there are a lot of things that have to be established. There are many facts. We are not going to enter into speculation, but the only way to answer these questions is to launch an investigation, as Secretary Rapp has said, as quickly as possible, and to enlighten and to clearly clarify the causes of the tragedy. Would you like to add anything? I agree with everything Francois Philippe has said. I think if I were uh, mourning a loved one today, I want to know what had happened, why it happened, and who was responsible. And I think an investigation must answer those three questions. And Canada will seek answers to these questions. Canada will seek answer to these questions. With our allies, with the international community, the world want to know. And certainly Canadians and Canada will seek answers to these questions. Madam? Uh, Teresa Romano, Omni News Italian, Minister Champagne, I know that you speak Italian very well, so... I don't know if we have interpretation in Italian for Dominic, but I will do free translation for you. It would be, it would be very it's appreciated if you can answer in Italian as well. Um, in light of the latest developments, but also in light of uh, Iran's Civil Aviation Authority invitation for Canadian investigators from the Transportation Safety Board to join a growing team probing the plane crash, does Canada still uh, need European country, as Italy, for example, as a uh, diplomatic intermediary? And what role Italy will play going forward? Well, first of all, let me answer in English for the vast majority, and yes. I will translate then in Italian if you allow me uh, to answer this way. Um, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank Luigi Di Maggio, which is the Foreign Minister of Italy. Uh, we had a conversation yesterday where, obviously, for Canadians to understand, since Canada does not have a presence in Iran, we are acting to the Italian embassy in Tehran. So the Italian government and Luigi uh, offered me all the assistance that the Italian government can. Uh, obviously, Canadian officials need to work to the Italian uh, presence in the country to obtain the visas because there's procedures behind it. That's why I spoke to the Iranian foreign minister, but also the Italian foreign minister. 
uh, to accelerate the process. And I'm following that very closely. That's why I spoke also with my Ukrainian counterpart. So Italy is playing a crucial role. Uh, I want to thank the Italian people. I want to thank the Italian civil service. I want to thank um, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Italy for immediately offering to Canada uh, all the assistance that Italy can offer.